All right, today we are going to ease into the topic of home electroplating. And here I have a 1983 McGregor M85. And this is actually a reproduction of a 1955 club. Uh, it's called the Cola Chrome. And it is a proper butter knife. Look at the top line on that. Three iron. But what makes this club really cool is this. It is a copper face. Uh, I'm sure it's for feel, but also as this starts to corrode a little bit, you get a little more bite on uh, your clubs like your wedges, similar to how we uh, see that with raw wedges and rusted out wedges. But this is a really good club. Like this is a really nice uh, example of um, someone who's took really good care of these clubs. But we know when you buy these on eBay, you can probably expect um, something more like this. This is where the copper has actually worn off the face. Um, so it's a little unsightly. You know, the club still works. Look, you know, I'm sure I can get a bogey with this club here. But you know what, man, I really love bringing things back to life. So I'm going to show you how to electroplate uh, copper onto that face. And once you learn this technique, uh, the, the possibilities are endless so take a look at this this is um this is a set of mizunos that i have these are the goats man these are the mp32s you see there's the quality of the club right there um yesterday did a little practicing with some bright nickel plating and this is how it turned out so that turns out amazing so once you learn sort of the concepts of this and you do anything you want. And I practiced on uh, this old club here. This is an old Louise Suggs. I think I got it in, I kind of have this stash of clubs that I practice on. You'll see I even did a whole um, uh, Walter Hagen, Hag Ultra, did that in copper. Turned out all right, man. But the quality of the plating really depends on the quality of the underlying metal. So you really do have to spend a little time polishing the club. Um, some of the tutorials that I showed you, but yeah, this turned out cool. You know, this thing didn't have any copper on it at all. It wasn't even a copper face club, but I made it one just to make sure that I can do that. So what we'll do in this video, I'm going to walk you through all the steps that I'm going to do to brush plate this. I don't have proper blush brush plating equipment. Uh, I did kind of a, um, Kansas city redneck hack to show you how to do it. Um, so we'll do an equipment rundown of the things that you need and show you how to uh, make a charger and then we'll do it. First thing I learned about electroplating is you cannot plate copper onto chrome. You cannot plate copper onto steel and you cannot plate copper onto anything that's dirty. So we need to do a couple of steps to get this thing prepped before we do the actual plating. And the whole process doesn't take very long. Again, it's all in the prep. It's like painting a car. The quality of the paint of the car is going to depend on how you prep the surface underneath it. And it's going to be even more important when you're doing electroplating because you're putting such a thin layer of copper or nickel uh, onto the surface. So we got to take time to, to make sure that everything underneath it is prepped correctly. So the first thing we need to do is we need to clean it. And this is uh, something called electro cleaner. Uh, I also have some degreaser that I'll probably start with just to, you know, give it an initial cleanse. Then I mentioned that copper does not stick to bare steel. So it does bond to nickel. And what I have here is something called Woods Nickel Strike. And I bought both of these on eBay or Amazon. I can't remember which one. Um, so we are going to put a little thin uh, layer of nickel on the uh, face first. And then I have uh, copper sulfate. And where do you get copper sulfate, right? It sounds like a chemistry class. Uh, you can get this at Home Depot. If you look uh, for ZEP root killer, the active ingredient is copper sulfate. Uh, and then I have some barkeeper's friend. I have some distilled water. And then I have this pile of old chargers. Each of these chargers has an output listed on the bottom there. This one is three volts DC output. This one, I believe, is a 5 volts output. It's kind of hard to see. There it is. 5 volts. And this one was from an old camera. I think this one is like 8 volts, 8.4 volts DC. The reason I have all these is because each of these require a different, um, different power supply. So for this one, it says 
to electro clean at 10 volts. I don't have a 10 volt charger, so I'm gonna use this eight volt one. The Woods Nickel Strike says here, I need five to seven volts. I'll use that five volt charger. And then the copper, I'm gonna use the lowest one possible. So the more current that you use and higher voltage, the more um, plating, the more rapid it plates, but you also risk things like burning it uh, or uh, the copper accumulates very, very rapidly. Uh, the higher the voltage. Um, so I'm going to do it slow, but I'm going to make mistakes. Uh, one, because I'm learning, and two, to show you that it's simple to recover from these mistakes. You, you're mechanically bonding copper ions onto this club, um, and, you know, you can, it's uneven or, you know, builds up very rapidly. We're going to smooth it all down. It's going to look great. I already practiced on it. I'm sure people who do this professionally are probably cringing right now, but it works. So let's do it. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna degrease it with this super strength degreaser. You can use whatever you want, but this is just gonna get a little bit of the oils off of the club. So remember, it's not going to stick to anything dirty. It's not gonna to stick to the chrome, but I'm still gonna take some precautions in that I'm going to mask off the areas that I do not want to copper plate. So I'm just gonna give that just a little swipe here. And then I'm gonna rinse that off. Okay, so we're gonna do a little Kansas City hack here. I have a couple of alligator clips that I'm going to connect to the ends of my power supply. And again, I made a video on how to make these power supplies. They're just old phone chargers, old camera chargers. Uh, but what I've done is I've separated the wires, sorry about that. I have the wires separated here. This one's labeled as negative. I need to know what that one is. Sometimes they are um, different colors, positive, negative, black and white, or positive, negative, red and black. And this one, they weren't labeled, but I did figure out which one was the negative. So this electro cleaner, uh, Pretty powerful stuff. There's a bunch of warnings on it. If you got these this many warnings on it, you should probably be careful. So I have gloves on. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to connect the negative. I'm gonna call it black. You can, if you don't have one of these, um, you can probably make one. It just really helps. So all I'm gonna do is clip this onto the club. And that's my first step. My second step is, and this is where it would be helpful if you had a proper brush plating wand, but again, I'm, I'm single-handedly keeping these makeup pad remover company in business. So I'm just going to fold this over here and I'm going to connect this in here like this. So now I got a, like a little homemade wand here um, and that's going to help me with sort of uh, keeping the end of the lead from touching the metal and that's that would cause burns but that's all I made there and now what we're going to do is we're going to connect these respective ends to the power supply so the black I'll connect to the negative the red I'll connect to the positive plug that in and then what we're going to do is we're going to electro clean it and this says to do it for 60 seconds um, so yeah, I'll just show you what, all I'm doing is I'm just going to brush it on. So let me plug this in underneath my little tripod. So I got the negative connected to the black and I have the positive connected to the red. I'm going to keep these separated and then I'm going to plug it in. So here I've just poured a little bit of the electro cleaner into this cup and I'm going to soak this. All right, nice and soaked. And then I'm just going to brush it along the places that I want to clean. Okay, I'm going to unplug that. All right, next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it a rinse. And should, I should probably mask that. Let's do a little dry. 
I'm going to mask this off first because if there is any bare metal exposed here, I don't want to get copper on the sides here. So I'm going to tape it off and we'll see how that looks. Hold on. On to the next step. The next step is we're going to do the nickel strike. And remember I said that copper won't stick to the bare steel, so it will bond to nickel and nickel will bond to steel. So we're going to put down a very thin layer of nickel and then we can put the copper on top of that. And then Wood's nickel strike again called for five volts. It says here in the instructions, look at me, a man reading actual instructions. Okay, so I have my five volt charger. I don't remember what this was for, probably an old phone charger or something. Uh, but, and again, there's gonna be a link in the description on how to make your own. Same steps here. I'm gonna connect the leads to the red goes to the red which is my positive. That's it. Black goes to the negative. The negative is connected to my club. The positive is connected to this little pad that I just did. So plug that one in. Now we just soak this with the Woods Nickel Strike. See it's nice and soaked so that current can flow from this positive that's full of these uh, nickel ions, whatever. I got C's, C student, so don't listen to me. If you know what the hell I'm talking about, put a comment or something, explain it to these fools. I'm just trying to make it shiny. It's going to flow from the positive to the negative. The negative is connected to the club. The positive is connected to this soaked woods nickel strike. And all we're going to do is brush it on. Take a look at this here. So it says 20 to 30 seconds. Make sure it stays soaked. Finally, we're on the last step, which is the copper. So we have the steels covered in the nickel and the copper is going to bond to the nickel. Same thing, made a little pad, hooked it up to my little alligator clip. I'm going to soak it. And then this is the copper solution. Again, you can buy this at Home Depot. And I'll maybe make a picture or something, but. Now, I'm gonna make some mistakes so that you can see that you can recover from these mistakes, but if you start to brush it on, you'll see that the copper is changing colors here. Now you're gonna ask about durability. All right, so the more or the thicker you lay this on, um, you know, the more durable it's going to be. Um, the good news is, is now that you know how to do this, if it does wear, you do it again. So it just takes time. I'm really not doing anything. I'm sorry if you can't see that. That soak. But you can see the copper starting to bond with the nickel in those bare spots. See that? It just takes a lot of time. Now this is the brush method. There's a bath method, and that's what I did with the Mizuno. I did all of these steps previous with the same same method, but when it came time to actually doing the bright nickel, I used uh, a bath method, which is, I just took a little bucket. And I had a um, nickel anode, which is just a big piece of, nickel and I connected that to my positive lead and I uh, had the negative connected to the club and I let that sit for about 20 minutes and that thing came out sweet all right let me make some mistakes here let me show you what it's like to just leave something too long you want to keep moving but what happens is you start to see that it builds up very very rapidly 
but you could also burn it. And we can recover from that. Let me see if I can get that to burn. A very low voltage here, so maybe what I'll do at the end of this video is hook it up to some more power, maybe that five volt charger or the 10 volt charger, but. And I'm not, this isn't just swiping it on there. I'm, this is bonding to the club. This is on there until it, it's worn off. See, that's pretty damn good. All right, so this is a little time consuming. Um, I'm gonna let this go, I'll keep going, and uh, let's see how it turns out. Okay, so all in, I think I've gone another five minutes, maybe. I mean, you're keeping this thing soaked, it's full of copper, and it is bonding to that nickel layer, and then it's bonding to itself. So you'll see that uh, I filled in that space where it was bare. There we go. So you're like, hey, that doesn't look good. What the hell? No, we're going to clean it up. It's going to look great. So don't worry about that. Before I move on to kind of cleaning this up a little bit, I want to make sure that you see what could happen if um, something goes wrong. So let me just stop here. I'm going to get that other club out. Here, I'll just do it right now. All right, this was the one that I practiced on. Plug that up there. And then I'm going to change power supply. So I'm going to put something a little um, more strong. Let me use the, the five volt. Actually, you know what? I'm going to use the eight volt one to show you just how ridiculous that it will get. So again, the, the more current, the more voltage, um, the faster it happens. But man, take your time, dude. Do it right. So plug that in. Okay, so now I got the eight volt power supply on here. I'm gonna soak this and I'm just gonna show you uh, what it's like to maybe burn it a little bit. I'm gonna leave it in the spot too long. Remember I told you you gotta move around. You see that? That spot there, that is, the copper is built up very rapidly and it starts to burn. So let me show you that you can recover from this. So I'm going to really make sure that this looks like shit. Okay, you with me on that? Here's how you recover from it. I wouldn't put it on a polishing wheel, but I would put a little barkeeper's friend on it. And this is for copper. All I'm gonna do is put a little bit on this pad. And then watch this, this is gonna be really cool. with me on that so don't freak out if you got real heavy deposits or you burned it because you can clean it off right so now we're back to a pretty decent looking club and all we need to do is rinse that so let me unplug this charger clean up the color chrome and see how it turned out all right i got it rinsed off i got the tape off and you're like damn that doesn't look good well, it's gonna look good. Right?
Pretty good. There's no hole there, no bare spot. Now the longer we do it, the, the again, the more, uh, the thicker it will be. And if it wears off, do it again. You know how to do it now. So yeah, I'm gonna clean this up and we'll maybe take a picture of it and call it a day. Fixed my Colochrome pitching wedge. Pretty badass. Okay, I got it cleaned up. No more bare spots. Looks pretty good. It's a good start. But remember, this technique is going to be used to do other types of plating. We're gonna do we can do the bright nickel, so we can get this effect here. I mean that took a while. That's why I kind of jumped into the bath plating method because I was like, screw this, I'm not gonna rub this for an hour just to shine up a club. But man, um, possibilities are pretty, again, pretty limitless. And I'm a dipshit, I'm a C student, man. So if I could figure this out, you can do it too. So hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about these clubs because they're badass. Um, yeah, let's go put them in the back.